I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about accessibility, CSS architecture, and printing. Let's check it out. First up, we have some big news. Huge news. The Treehouse Show is now available on iTunes as a podcast. Christmas came early. That's right. You can go ahead and head over to iTunes, type in Treehouse Show, and you should be able to find us there. We have a podcast available in HD and in standard definition. So every Tuesday, if you would prefer to watch The Treehouse Show on iTunes instead of YouTube or on the Treehouse site, it's now available there as well. That, that'll, that'll sync to your phones, your iPods, whatever you kids have these days. That's right. And if you like the show, please be sure to head over there and give us a review, a rating. Yeah. Subscribe to us. If you don't like the show, don't rate it. Yeah. No, we're, we're just kidding. Sort of. So first up, we have something called Pixie.js. This is a pretty interesting project, uh, and, it, and it's really, really cool. So what this does is a cross-browser implementation of WebGL, Canvas, and mobile. So you get a 2D WebGL renderer with seamless Canvas fallback that lets it work across all modern browsers. Now, that's certainly a lot of words, but what you really want to see is demos. So check out what you can accomplish using pixie.js. One of the examples that they have on their site is a game which is pretty amazing. Uh, and this is all done in JavaScript. And you would expect it to be a lot heavier or a lot slower to run, but it's actually really, really quick and pretty fun to play. Um, so we'll have a link to that in the show notes, which uh, you can also get on iTunes as well as our YouTube channel. Anyway, a bunch of great stuff uh, and actually very easy to program for. So check that out. That's pixie.js. Very cool stuff. Man, JavaScript is getting pretty fast these days. Yeah, yeah. or pixie fast. Very, very good, Jason. Thank you. Next up is the Sublime Web Inspector. Now, if you're, if you're familiar with Sublime Text, which just released its third version, I think it's still in beta, though. Yeah. If you're familiar with Sublime Text and you're familiar with the Web Inspector in, say, Google Chrome or in Firefox, then you're going to love this because it puts two and two together, bam, right in one interface. Basically, it's just a plugin for Sublime that allows you to debug JavaScript right inside of the text editor. So it basically closes the feedback loop between the browser and the text editor so you don't have to bounce back and forth. You can go ahead and set breakpoints. There's actually a console in there. Looks like there's interactivity. That's a headline on the page here. There's a debugger and a whole bunch more stuff. And you can go ahead and install it. It's available on GitHub. And if you like it, you should support it by donating. Very cool stuff. Yeah, it's uh, if you've ever used the live reload plugin, which we've talked about on previous Treehouse shows, which uh, I don't know if we mentioned, the entire archive is in our iTunes feed. You could go back and, and check them out to see what we have to say about Live Reload. iTunes. <laughs> did we mention that yet? I think we did. Uh, next up, we have a project called intro.js. And this is, quote, better introductions for websites and features with a step-by-step -step guide for your projects. So there's a nice demo on here. You click Show Me How, and you can highlight sections of the page. And as you're going through, you know, you click Next and it'll go through and highlight different sections of your page, skip it, and whatever. This is, as you would expect, very, very easy to use. You can get the code on GitHub as well. So this is for something, you know, it'd be really useful in the blank slate of a web application. A uh, user gets to your site, they have no idea what to do. Or and, maybe they haven't entered in any data at all, and it's right. basically just blank. They, you know, say it's a to-do list app, they haven't typed in any to-dos yet, it's just blank and they need to know what to do. So this would be a great way to introduce them to your site. I see what they did there. Yeah. And um, this will also be available in the show notes in our iTunes feed. Thanks, Jason. That was a really good intro to intro.js iTunes. So next up is this really amazing article from Denise Jacobs over on SitePoint called CSS Architectures New Best Practices. 
Basically, it's just a collection of all the latest best practices in CSS. You want to reset your page with normalize.css so that you create a level playing field for a cross-browser development. Very good tip there. If you're still using a clear fix that looks like this to clear your floated elements, Denise says, we really need to talk. And <laughs> she suggests a few other solutions there. And there's just lots of great tips in here. I highly recommend uh, you check it out. Ooh, icon element, that's, a, that's another good tip there. And get on the CSS3 train. I think we've talked a lot about CSS3 on the show. Yeah. But of course, CSS3 can do a lot to enhance your front-end performance, reduce the amount of images that you're using. I mean, there's just there's a million different benefits there. So, very cool article. If you're new to web development, this would be especially useful to you. Woo, woo, woo. That was me getting on the CSS3 train. Cool. Next up, we have a project called Descent. This is an open source landing page creator, and uh, it's actually feature packed. So, um, this is a ready to go application that you could check out. And what you're going to do is set up different landing pages where you'll track things like where it's coming from, different people's IP addresses. Um, you can track your signups, users' locations, and then you can export all this data pretty easily. Um, this is, like I said, really easy to use, really quick. And uh, it's available on GitHub, so you can go ahead and clone this repository and then start tracking your users and setting up landing pages. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It seems like a lot of stuff is over on GitHub these days. Yeah. Huh. Strange. If you're new, maybe you should check out GitHub. Yeah, um, but what's not available on GitHub is going to be our show notes in the iTunes feed. Mm. That's on iTunes. Right. Yeah, iTunes. Search for the Treehouse Show. Treehouse Show. Okay. Next up is Color Oracle. Color Oracle is an app that's available for Mac OS X as well as Windows. And it looks like it's even available for Linux. Pretty cool. Basically, it allows you to see what your website or your application, basically your entire screen, might look like to someone that has a color impairment. So, in other words, if I were looking at a fairly colorful web page here, let's see if I can, I can find one. There we go. Pixie.js has a pretty colorful page. I've gone ahead and installed the app here, and when I click through here, I can see what these different color vision impairments might look like. So there's some color available, but other colors are not. Now, I'll go ahead and switch it back to normal vision here, flip back to color oracle. This is really useful if you want to make your website more you know, accessible. More accessible and look better for people that have color vision impairments. Of course, color blindness is actually really common. Um, and so it's really important to make sure that your site has enough contrast in light and dark values. So in other words, you don't want to have two elements that are two different colors right next to one another hmm. um, if they're actually the same lightness and darkness. You want to make sure the lightness and darkness is what's differentiating differentiating those and not just the color. So a good way to test that is with a tool like Color Oracle, or you could even just look at your web page in black and white. Hmm, that's a really good idea. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about responsiveness on the show. That's so right. this, is, this is a whole other spectrum of that gamut. Yes, it is. A lot of words. Next hmm. up, we have an article called Printing for the Web. This is by Hans Christian. And what he's doing in this article is going through and talking about a lot of different techniques that you can use when you're formatting your web pages for printing. Um, this is something that gets out, left out a lot uh, when you're writing your CSS. But there's actually a wealth of things that you can control. Things like page orientation. You can specify that if somebody's printing out your page, it should be done in landscape. You can even control where certain page breaks happen or don't happen. So Hans goes through and he's got just a ton of different suggestions and improvements that you can make to your content. Uh, as an example, somebody is not going to be able to see a link in the content immediately. So if you want to, you can put the title or the URL uh, right after the formatting of the link. So anyway, great article, and you can check that out in the show notes on YouTube or iTunes. Mainly on iTunes. Right. You know, so if you haven't checked out iTunes yet, you should 
Okay. This yeah, you should probably do that. This joke's getting tired. All right. Uh, I think I think that's all I got. I think that's it. I am at NickerP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. If you like this podcast, you can subscribe to it on YouTube at youtube.com slash go treehouse or on iTunes. Very cool stuff. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.